Good evening, everyone, and welcome to President Joel's State of the University Address. My name is Adina Minkowitz, and I am in my senior and fourth year at Stern College for Women. I am majoring in biology with a minor in studio art, and aside from studying, I am very privileged to sit on the student council this year as president, as well as representing the student body tonight here. Woo. It's hard to get people excited in this day and age. With the advent of new science and technologies nearly every day, it takes something truly special to deliver the sought after wow factor. Nobody delivers in this regard quite like the Apple company who today made an announcement for the new iPhone 5. Yeah. <laughs> an announcement that technology enthusiasts have eagerly anticipated for months. Apple has made it quite a habit of staying ahead of the curve in their industry, and it seems as though they've done it again. Their products continue to change and shape our world. But what's their secret? How do they do it? I believe that it all stems from asking a simple but essential question. What's next? In light of this, I can't help but think about Yeshiva University and specifically my time at Stern College for Women and how I have been able to be part of asking what's next for us here at Yeshiva University. When I began Stern College, I assumed that my college experience would be quite routine and run-of-the-mill. Honestly, I was on a mission to get in and get out, secure my undergraduate degree, apply to graduate school, and possibly make a couple friends on the way. But boy, was I mistaken. I have found Stern College to be the furthest thing from ordinary. From the moment I stepped foot in this place, I realized that Yeshiva University experience accounts to so much more than a step along the way. Yeshiva is a community. It's about family. It's about a first-rate education as a means towards living a fulfilled life. The undergraduate student body here at Yeshiva University is incredibly involved, engaged, and enthusiastic. And with over 100 campus clubs, there is something to do every single night. And much like Apple, we are always looking at how we can remain ahead of the curve and how we can tackle tomorrow by asking, What's next? As president of student council, I would like to specifically call attention to what the councils at Stern College and Yeshiva College have been doing these last couple of weeks and what we strive to do for the rest of the year and hopefully continue for the future. This year, the undergraduate student councils have chosen to fashion our councils to unite and ignite. Unite our student body and ignite them to be excited about being students at Yeshiva University. Our focus is to involve every single member of our campus in campus life and to enthuse our peers and students about what Yeshiva University has to offer. So far, we ran some pretty successful events, both on the men's and women's campuses, including a welcome back barbecue, a camp out themed get together, club fairs, each with attendance of over 300 students. And just last night, the Stern College and Yeshiva College Councils, in conjunction with the Psychology Club, ran a poignant and eye-opening 9-11 panel. There is always something exciting happening at Yeshiva University. So on behalf of my fellow students, I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of you who have made this experience and my experience possible. To the world-class Yeshiva University faculty, thank you for your time, scholarship, guidance, and patience. To the amazing staff that makes this one-of-a-kind university function, thank you to all you do. Whether you are behind the scenes or working with us each day, we all appreciate your hard work and dedication. To the Yeshiva University Administration and Board of Trustees, thank you for your continued support and for believing in the mission of Yeshiva University. And lastly, to my fellow students, thank you for joining me on this incredible journey. Finally, to President Joel, thank you for your tireless leadership in envisioning this institution as much more than a university, but as a home and community for all of us. The timing of Apple's announcement was quite apropos because aside from making me think about what's next, it makes me think of Rosh Hashanah, when we will be dipping the apple in honey just next week. I would like to wish all of you a Shana Tova, and without further ado, it is my great honor to introduce President Richard Joel.
The IT department will be available to help repair your apples after you dip them in the honey. And I hope you enjoy that. Thank you so very, very much. Um, I think I'm set up nicely because the best way to draw a crowd to an evening like this is to make sure that I made it mandatory for my class to attend. And we're going to have a class. This year I have the, uh, the privilege, um, not even dubious, to uh, be teaching a course at the uh, Sims. Uh, with uh, some um, rollover to yeshiva on, uh, on leadership in a not-for-profit institution, and I've had the pleasure already of spending some time with some quite remarkable young men. So after tonight, um, I get to go upstairs and be humbled by them telling me what we're doing wrong. Um, I want to also thank so many of you, um, uh, particularly alumni, particularly people who spent your lives at yeshiva for being here tonight. Um, for something that, that um, I think is a necessary thing, and I hope you've all brought pillows because I want to be thorough in my, uh, in my report to you. Bishos um, Dr. Lamb, and what a privilege it is for me to always begin by saying Bishos Dr. Lamb, and please God for many, many years. Bishos Harash Yeshiva. Rashi Yeshiva, honored by your presence. And Kala Kahal HaKadosh Hazel, the wonderful deans, faculty, professional university staff, trustees, alumni, supporters, and dear students assembled here this evening, plus countless tens of people listening at home. <laughs> In a world where I often read reports about what I said, how nice it was last night for me to see the commentator that already reported on what I said, even though I haven't said it yet. So it was a, a whole breakthrough. It's very, oh, it's there. Look at that. President, jo I'm not good at all these visual aids that my brilliant colleagues have put up. President Joel to make news at State of the University Address. Now, this was a challenge late at night because I had no intention of making news. Uh, so first of all, the big news, the big news is how much you matter that what we're about matters. And I believe I have a responsibility to report to you on what will remain an important part of our lives, Yeshiva University. Now, going forward, any of you interested can keep score to see if the commentator was right about what they said that I would say. So let's get to it. Yesterday, I accepted the Board of Trustees' offer to extend my term as president through June 2018. For that, I thank my wife and ask her forgiveness. Um, my Joels are here, by the way. It's very, I have to, it's very exciting. Um, we thought a lot about it, and I assume the trustees thought a lot about it. Uh, we've done an enormous amount. In, uh, I begin, it was nine years ago on the 21st of September that I offered my investiture remark, I, I, uh, remarks. I began my first year in June 12th of uh, 2003. So I'm beginning my 10th year. Um, you've given me an enormous amount in those 10 years, and Esther and I did a lot of uh, thinking and soul searching as to whether I should declare victory and leave, um, or whether there's, there's more to do. But I have you, I mean, I have you, and, and we have our dreams, and, and there's more to do. So it's therefore right that we look forward together, plan together, and dream together. So many of you, so many of you, are responsible for getting us all to this point, and so many of you have guided me and continue to guide me, always looking to tomorrow. You know you have my appreciation, you know you have my appreciation, and you know you have my deep thanks. So let's discuss the state of Yeshiva University. It is here, here, in this complex and very special space that we get to see our future. It is in this very spot with a heavy dose of architectural symbolism that the base medrash in which we toil in our sacred texts, the library in which we explore our worldly wisdom, and the lounge in which our community congregates as one, all converge here in a focal intersection. If I listen carefully, if I listen carefully, 
I hear the murmurings of a consecrated conversation taking place, a conversation between Torah and the world, between tradition and modernity, between the sacred contents of this beautiful bastion of wisdom and the wide world around it so desperately yearning for the dissemination of our contents, for we all inhabit a sacred space. Yeshiva University exists as a Torah-informed institution partaking in a divine dialogue where Torah and Jewish values speak to what it is that we do here in our lecture rooms and Bate Medrash in our offices within departments and beyond. You know why that is. For over a hundred years and in hundreds more ways we have together articulated our mission and our purpose. On a shelf in my office uh, there's a, a YU Pushka, a charity, there's that YU Pushka. Um, I have to learn how to do this, right? There's a YU Pushka um, from the early 1960s and I enjoy it because it's adorned with every slogan imaginable except the ones that I came up with. It says, Torah Umada, training future leadership, Torah and Chachma and Gedula b'makom achad, Torah, Chachma, wisdom and strength in one place, service to the community. Uh, so since that pushka was, uh, was uh, started, uh, you and I have added to that list. For the first nine years of my presidency, dating back to my investiture in 2003, I've described the educational process here at Yeshiva as one that ennobles and enables. I've told many of you I've shared that great wisdom with President Bush, and he liked it, although he did not incorporate it in the State of the Union. We have characterized the mission of Yeshiva as as Torah umada lechatchila within a big tent. As Torah umada lechatchila within a big tent. And we've made it so. These categorizations remain true and have been actualized in tangible ways on our campuses and beyond, as I hope to share with you. But I want to offer some new language to describe and to clarify our mission at Yeshiva as a more singular statement, strong in its simplicity. Yeshiva University exists as the world's Torah-informed university. The Jewish people, forever smitten by the romance of our relationship to God and his Torah, endure as a covenantal people that share the values of that Torah with the world, even as we live by those values. In keeping with this historic and religious mandate, Yeshiva embraces the challenge of bringing Torah into conversation with the world. To be sure, Torah Umada remains the philosophical construct at the very bedrock of this institution. But even when we speak of Torah Umada, we always emphasize and must emphasize that Torah is the Ikar. The Torah is the core, the center, and the Torah informs what we do and how we encounter the world. Moreover, when we speak about who we are and what drives us, I think we have to put forward an agenda of Shleimut, of wholeness. Wholeness is the sought-after product of our Torah-informed conversation and manifests itself in many ways at Yeshiva. It means living a life that values integrity. It means the assumption of responsibility. It means conducting oneself with dignity. It means striving for success. It means, frankly, that our lives are supposed to mean something. All of these notions coalesce into the sort of shalemut, the sort of meaningful wholeness which permeates the very air we breathe here at Yeshiva and which Torah teaches us. Yeshiva then has to serve as a factory in the fashioning of shlemut, and there's no one way to accomplish shlemut at Yeshiva. You understand what I mean, that all of us, all of us have so many pieces, but through the path of Torah, we get to construct ourselves as whole, that the pieces come together, that it informs who we are, that we figure out how to be whole and how to be one with the transcendent, that we figure out how to be whole and one with ourselves, with our people, and with humanity. That's Shlemus. That's what we learn here. That's why we do this. There are many paths that take the form of different majors or different Jewish learning programs or different service learning opportunities or a whole host of other things. Yeshiva is not a river that compels its students to submit to its unidirectional content. It instead encourages its students to sail, to sail the sacred seas of Torah 
towards their own distinctive destination on the shores of Shlemut, on the shores of wholeness. Shlemut, wholeness, also means that in the service of God, we strive for wholeness as individuals first and subsequently seek that wholeness as a yeshiva, as a university, as a community, as a people, and as a civilization. Therefore, our agenda is to say that we are committed to helping you, students, achieve personal wholeness, and then using that to give the gift of wholeness to our respective societies, communities, and even disciplines. The state of Yeshiva University, ladies and gentlemen, is sound, it is strong, and it is poised for tomorrow. We've been, yeah, yeah. We've been building, and we've been building with vigor and with purpose. I noticed the applause did not come from my class, by the way. It's a, that's half a grade. Um, we've been building with vigor and with purpose. We've built in a physical sense. The last nine years have seen the construction of numerous buildings on our various campuses. Among them, the Gluck Center, Student Counseling Center, Nagel Commons and the Heights Lounge, the 185th Street Pedestrian Plaza on the Wolf Campus, the Leah and Leah Leon Eisenberg Base Medrash, a new 35th Street Dormitory, and a renovated Stanton Hall on the Israel Henry Barron Campus, the Greenberg Center for Student Life at the Cardoza School of Law, the Price Center for Genetic and Translational Medicine and Block Research Pavilion on the Resnick Campus, and a whole host of other physical improvements, laboratories, dormitories, and so much more. Apartment buildings filled, increasingly filled, with yeshiva students and families have transformed our Wilf campus into a Wilf village. Mm. Oh, very good, very good, sit down. <laughs> All of these improvements have amounted to hundreds of millions of dollars in capital investment. Moreover, We've built, our, we've built our Shlemut agenda, we've carefully constructed our organizational ethos, our institutional brand, as one which puts Torah in conversation with the world in distinct and magnificent ways. Our high schools are renewed, they're growing, they're thriving. We have a transformed academic leadership throughout the university. And over the last nine years, the size of our Manhattan campus full-time faculty, over the last nine years with all that we went through, the size of the Manhattan campus's full-time faculty has increased from 272 to 367, an increase of 95. Our graduate schools, our graduate schools serve as noteworthy barometers. The Azraeli School of Jewish Education and Administration has undergone tremendous growth, now boasting 12 full-time faculty members, 189 master's candidates, 64 doctoral students in the spring of 2012, and offering first-class, wonderful, cutting-edge professional training. The Bernard Revel Graduate School of Jewish Studies currently has 23 doctoral students, the most in its history, 23 doctoral students. Actually, I just told that to Dr. Chaim Soloveitchik, who phoned me from Jerusalem to wish me good luck in Aksiva Chasimatova, and I told him that, and he told me he couldn't be more proud, and which is really wonderful, and I hung up quickly. The large, <laughs> has 23 doctoral students, the largest number in its history, has an extraordinary faculty, a breadth of programs in the classroom and beyond. Albert Einstein College of Medicine is moving forward dramatically with its research agenda while remaining true to its creed of science at the heart of medicine. It has launched the Yeshiva University program on Jewish genetic health, and we've constructed a new base Knesses, a new synagogue whose students publish volumes on medicine and halacha. The Benjamin N. Cardoza School of Law has been not only physically rebuilt, but has attained great quality and is committed to bringing integrity to law through everything from the Innocence Project and Human Rights and Genocide Clinics to the Beth Tzedek Legal Services Coalition. Wurzweiler School of Social Work continues to lead the field of Jewish communal social work and has recently lost programs, launched programs, it hasn't lost programs. <laughs> Enough around here has lost programs and has recently launched programs in partnership both with the Peace Corps and with the Veterans Administration in service to our nation's veterans while strengthening both its training in service of the broad community and the Jewish communal service as well. Furkauf is a premier program that trains world-class psychologists, he's not here, right, including my son, 
Um, and, has, and Einstein is also very worthwhile because the son at Furkauf met the fourth year medical student at Einstein and please God they'll be married. And has done landmark and has done landmark work in training and placing psychologists in day schools and yeshivot. Clearly at yeshiva we don't just prepare graduate students for their professional careers, although we do that beautifully. We train a generation of leaders infused with the value of values and the importance of leading lives of shleimut, of consequence, and of integrity. Yeshiva University Israel trains rabbis and scholars, guides students in their gap year experiences, and works with alumni in Israel while the YU Museum here in New York has grown into a serious university museum, bridging the worlds of Jewish culture and academics. Our presidential fellowship in university and community leadership sustains me and trains a cadre of outstanding graduates in community leadership and university service, while the Center for the Jewish Future sends hundreds and thousands. <laughs> Are we applauding the fellows? I think we can applaud the fellows. While the Center for the Jewish Future sends hundreds of students across North America, more than hundreds of students, and around the world each year to engage in service learning missions and chesed programs. Students build lives in athletics, dramatics, journalism, advocacy, and service. The sheer number of programs and initiatives, and you heard it from the, uh, the much better president before me, um, the sheer number of programs and initiatives that we conduct here and all over the globe in the fostering of the conversation between Torah and the world is almost overwhelming and so very encouraging. And yet we have to continue to ask ourselves, how can we improve? What do we do next? What horizons beckon? Let me share five points that must illuminate our sky and contribute each in their own way to our shleimut, to our wholeness agenda. Five points. Number one, education next or education 2.0 for our yeshiva and our university. Two, continued development and support of our faculty and staff. Three, the building and maintaining of a viable business model for our institution. Four, continuing to build our thriving culture. And five, instilling in our students and community the mandate to matter. Number one, our conversation tonight was, must begin at the heart of our institution with our students. The shleimut, or wholeness, that we speak of must take root in you. It must take root in you. The whole world depends upon it. Shleimut at Yeshiva University doesn't just mean a dual curriculum. It means a rigorous life experience that educates, motivates, and fulfills. Over the past nine years, we've labored to build a first-rate educational product here at Yeshiva, and the public perception has finally caught up with that product. It serves as the ultimate testament to our noble undertaking that finally the numbers, the numbers in the face of this economy have begun to reflect its merit. With great pride, I announce that not only has our total undergraduate population, our total undergraduate population increased by 60, but this year's first time on campus class is up by 78 students over last year. <laughs> by the way, and it represents the largest entering classes of Yeshiva College and Stern College. And it represents a turnaround and the beginning of serious growth for the Sai Sim School of Business. This translates, I mean, this is important stuff. This translates into a 13% first time on campus increase and a 4% overall undergraduate student body increase. Numbers are flashing on the screens. So the Sai Sim School of Business, in addition to demonstrating significant growths in numbers, is demonstrating significant growth in quality as it undergoes its own radical recreation and an awakening of its entrepreneurial, ethical, and quality spirit. The quantitative growth in admissions numbers has not come at the expense of quality. This year we also welcomed 129 total honor students, the most honor students ever at the S. Daniel Abraham Honors Program at Stern College, the Schottenstein Honors Program at Yeshiva College, and the new Sai Sim School of Business Honors Program. And of course, the Yeshiva Must Meet Him Honors Program. We have provided students $37 million in financial aid annually. $37 million, by the way, 12 million of that comes from 
um, invested funds from, from return on endowment. 25 million comes from our normal operating costs. So if any of your parents would like to give us a mere $450 million for endowment for scholarships, we'd be flying. Um, we continue to develop a warm and vibrant community of students and scholars, and frankly, the truth is that many more students belong in our base medrash and belong in our classrooms. We need to ensure that more people can and will benefit from this truly sui generis educational product that only we provide. This year, we also received our decennial evaluation, that's once every 10 years, Baruch Hashem, from the Middle States Commission on Higher Education. In its report, not finalized yet, but I can tell, I got permission to tell you what I can tell you. In its report, the evaluation team glowingly affirmed that Yeshiva continues to meet all eligibility requirements in its self-designated categories of excellence. The Commission also provided us with 14 standards by which to measure our success, most of which we have met or exceeded, and some of which instruct us how we may improve. Two standards that we're looking at carefully are faculty development and student assessment. Additionally, and though I don't believe in outside rankings, and you, never, you know I never make a big deal about these things, it does reinforce our message that uh, upon its release today, uh, U.S. News and World Report has again ranked us in the top 50 universities, number 46. <laughs> and I won't be cynical. Above all, these evaluations corroborate what we all feel about Yeshiva, that our institution is strong, our impact great, and our future bright. So in recent months, you know, we have, re we have launched a new core curriculum at Yeshiva College. This stems from our faculty's commitment to fashion a curriculum worthy of our students. It reflects a state-of-the-art liberal arts and science education and provides a broad interdisciplinary exposure to key disciplines, their impact on each other. It's a giant step forward. It's something that we're all very excited about. It's something that you will love. This, I promise you, is not a burden, it's fuel for your intellectual futures. I've just, that's true. I promise. I've established a faculty-driven task force which will look at one of the diamonds of our undergraduate experience, our Jewish studies programs. This task force will ensure a plan for moving forward in ways that maximize all our abilities and ensure that our environment is one which builds student strengths and is a seamless part of the entire enterprise. They are to present their recommendations to me before the close of the academic year, and we'll see next steps next year in next year's curriculum. Exciting growth is occurring at Stern College as well. Over the last nine years, under the incredible, incredible leadership of Karen Bacon, are you here? Is she here? You are here. Okay, then you can turn, turn away. I went through this and I realized you're the only person I'm mentioning, mentioning by name, but, but then I also realized that you might be the senior dean at Yeshiva University. Is that right? Yes. Dean Bacon started at age three, at age three in a noble experiment, in a noble experiment. But Dean Bacon and her extraordinary faculty has taken the educational experience of Stern College to the next level, whether through the Anne Scheiber Fellowships to Einstein or the Jewish Foundation for the Education of Women Science Fellowships, through our partnership with the Legacy Heritage Fund and our Jewish Educators Project, or in the emergent strength of our master's programs in advanced biblical and Talmud studies. This year, the Yeshiva University Museum again hosted an exhibit by Stern women artists showcasing our students' tremendous creativity, tremendous talent to our community and beyond. We've just started a joint program with NYU in nursing, which is in just over a year, yielding tremendously positive results. Looking to the future, I'm committed that more senior university administration will make major efforts to spend more time, you know, most of the offices aren't there, to spend more time being with students and faculty to increase our presence on the Barron campus so that we get to feel as much of your experience as we do of this one. We continue to imagine an integrated and unified undergraduate faculty across our schools, which will benefit all of the students in immeasurable ways, 
enabling students on both undergraduate campuses to study with many of the same distinguished professors and to build departments and divisions with strength. Institutional wholeness can only be achieved through this continued collaboration and partnership. Over the last nine years, we've established, among others, the Center for Israel Studies, the Zahava and Moshel Strauss Center for Torah and Western Thought, nice things here, and at the Cardoza School of Law, the Center for Jewish Law and Contemporary Civilization, each with the goal of expanding intellectual offerings to our students while impacting the community at large and placing Torah in conversation with the world in important ways as only yeshiva can. We have launched and will inaugurate several new graduate programs, among them Masters in Accounting, an Executive MBA program, by the way, we needed nine students to break even, we have 15 in the first class. Masters, yeah, that's good. <laughs> masters and PhD programs now in applied mathematics and a masters in quantitative economics. In the coming months, we will establish a division for health professions, which will integrate our undergraduate programs while benefiting from the advice and support of many on the Einstein faculty. Beginning in Yirza Hashem, in September of 2013, we will launch doctoral programs in speech pathology and audiology, followed by doctoral programs in physical and occupational therapy in the fall of 2014. We hope these programs won't only benefit our students, but will serve as a choice destination for other students developing into a new educational and revenue source for our university. We've already established joint programs with other institutions historically in order to offer a wide array of opportunities to our students. But with all of these new programs, we're also looking to see how we build the joint relationships, both among the schools of the university, there's a new Cardozo-Einstein bioethics masters, right? But among the schools of the university and between the undergraduate experience and graduate training, to work for our mutual benefit, and we keep looking to do that. And that's what we as a community must work on. Finally, we've challenged and channeled significant university resources into exploring opportunities in online education, ensuring that we lead technology, not the technology leads us. We have already established a full online master's degree program at Azrieli, which will launch this spring. We've also engaged a full-time professional who will support faculty directly in the development of online courses and through faculty training and, and, and offering uh, faculty training programs. We're also committed to develop online course offerings on the undergraduate level when it works and adds value. When it works and adds value. Going forward, we will also explore continuing education across the professional spectrum, including the rabbinate and offer new certificate programs. At the same time, we're looking at ways for online education to benefit the yeshiva and day school world. With, uh, with this, yeshiva will take serious steps in the fields of blended and online education, with each school developing its own strategic direction to reflect their goals and priorities, and hopefully with our high schools serving as the out front labs of what we can do and how we do it. Number two, faculty and staff development. Pillows will be given out at number three. The faculty and staff of Yeshiva University serve as the true enablers of Shleimut. Though the ideological foundations of Shleimut might be outlined and explicated in this address, the true facilitators of our consecrated conversation on a daily basis are Yeshiva's unmatched faculty and staff. It remains a key priority of my administration and this board that as soon as resources become available, we look toward the restoration of retirement contributions and the redevelopment of a salary program for all faculty and staff. Students, you should know. Well, go ahead. You can applaud that one. That's a promise. In Congress, they would call it, though, an unfunded mandate. Okay, but it's a serious promise. Um, students, you should understand that this faculty, these rabbeim, and my administration have really been heroic, noble, and, and understanding in the fact that but for promotions and tenure, there have been no salary increases for three cycles. Now, thank God our, salary, our faculty are fairly paid, 
Okay? But each year without something more is really hard. They're not alone. Many, if not most, universities are that way. But their work hasn't remained stagnant. Their commitment hasn't remained stagnant. Their investment hasn't remained stagnant. If we're talking about the lessons of Shlemut, understand that though, what those who work on your behalf do and how much it means to them and how much it should mean to us. That's a good applause line. While this remains an aspiration as yet unfilled, we work to invest in our professional community in lots of ways. This last summer, in June, the Board of Trustees of Yeshiva awarded tenure to 10 members of our faculty, and last night, the Board of Trustees voted for another two. And even as fiscal constraints have forced us to trim faculty and staff, our commitment of investing in our faculty and our commitment to tenure to bring the finest faculty to come here and stay here, not as sojourners, but as members of this community, remain steadfast. A newly formed leadership development program will provide emerging faculty and staff leaders with professional development opportunities, and in February of 2013, we will introduce a program called Leading for Organizational Success. The component of the program addresses critical skills, experience, and leadership abilities needed in both an academic and in a research environment. A program called Healthy YU, our own in-house wellness program for faculty and staff, has been launched. Uh, and on October 11th, we will all have a barbecue. No, I didn't, I'm sorry. On October 11th, we will hold our first Manhattan campus's health fair on the Wilf campus. Bring your own soybeans. We are also introducing new voluntary benefits for faculty and staff, among them a critical illness and accident plan to assist individuals and their families with financial support during difficult periods of illness. Finally, it remains of paramount importance to continue to grow and support this faculty as they pursue their research and grant opportunities and share their research efforts with you, our students. This commitment remains regardless of economic challenges. The Cressel Research Fellowships are emblematic of that commitment. Additionally, from 2009 to 2011, at the height of the economic turndown, downturn, hmm, Yeshiva provided approximately 3.3 million in university funds to both faculty and student research endeavors on the Manhattan campuses, a standard we will continue in the future. And that's, and that's what we're trying to do in terms of building up the, the key partnership of, of faculty and staff. Number three, as with most private universities, the past few years have been extremely economically challenging. That's the absolute definition of the term Lushan Sagi Nahar, have been extremely economically challenging. Our endowment has diminished, the demand for undergraduate financial aid has increased, our niche market has questioned the value of private higher education, even though the case for a YU education has never been more compelling and the experience never richer. Budgets have been cut, benefits have been reduced, salaries have been stagnant, some programs and initiatives have been postponed or eliminated, all painful, albeit necessary, reductions that have provided us with a balanced Manhattan campus budget for the current fiscal year and moving forward. Yes, these times have been trying, but thank God we have you. A wonderful team of leadership, faculty, staff, trustees, overseers, students, philanthropic supporters who have helped us weather this period, which isn't over, which isn't over, but there's a light shining. You have ensured that the conversation between Torah and the world continues, that our students may find the success they seek no matter the circumstances. And for this, I thank you so profoundly. Knowing the value of our mission-driven institution, then, we are both resolute and hopeful moving forward. We must be assertive in sharing with our constituencies both the value proposition and the business case for yeshiva education. We have to demonstrate to them that they cannot afford to forego a yeshiva university education and that they can afford one. With the increasing number of community rabbis and educators modeling YU's values, with increased numbers of our alumni returning to their home communities, with more and more community-based Yemei Yun faculty lectures and YU Shabbatonim, and with a tremendously exciting, more um, ambitious recruitment program, 
we believe the momentum is ours. This year's enrollment was not a blip. It's the beginning of a trend. The few, yeah. But you know, it's really simple. It's really simple. The future depends on us. The reality is that expanded philanthropy and increased enrollment will make our dreams possible and enable the YU experience and enterprise to thrive. But our community, all of us, has to understand that Yeshiva University doesn't just happen. It needs funds to do its work, and everybody in this room shares some responsibility for keeping us alive and thriving. With smart and purposeful trimming, we are doing more with less. Our balanced budget is essential, by the way. It's essential that we have a balanced budget so that we can achieve our fundraising goals, because donors will think we're a properly managed enterprise. It's essential for maintaining confidence from the lending and the rating agencies that we deal with. It's essential for being able to meet our payroll and to make our necessary payments. But I have to say that to be what we need to be, we have to dream beyond the confines of our new budgetary reality. I tell you this, it won't be instantaneous, and there's no easy answer, except that if we work together as a business plan, we can do this. We can, we must, and we will. So look, we remain, we remain blessed with an endowment in, the excess, of a, in excess of a billion dollars. You know there's the old joke about you know how to make a small fortune, start with a big one? Okay, so we have a small fortune, right? We have a high quality, high quality investment committee and have established a professional investment office. We continue to build our donor base. We've built regional offices and established them in Bergen County, in Long Island, in Los Angeles, in Toronto, in an effort to establish a grassroots base across North America. We will continue to reach out to our alumni who uniquely understand the importance of a yeshiva education. In 2012, 32 percent, is that up here? Oh, I was going to see, if, first time I looked to see a number, it's not there. In 2012, 32 percent of Manhattan campus current use cash gifts, was money that we got for use, for cash use, 32 percent of that for the Manhattan campus 32% of those gifts came from alumni through, through aggressive, which is a very large number, by the way. They might have come from three alumni, but they've come from alumni. Through aggressive outreach, through aggressive outreach to our alumni, we will increase the percentage and the absolute numbers. And these partners around the country and across the globe have picked up the mantle and invested in us. In 2012, the fiscal year that concluded June 30th, our community invested a formidable $89.6 million in Yeshiva University, and in the upcoming fiscal year, we've set an ambitious yet attainable goal of raising $102.8 million. That's the good news. That's the good news. Well, uh, those levels, as we meet those levels, and we must and we will meet those levels, that will maintain the institution. It will not grow us. It will not provide more salary. It will not provide pension benefits. We simply can't provide promised additional resources at our current level. To advance, we all have to help identify investors with vision and concerned donors, alumni and parents, even students, who will see yeshiva as the compelling tzedakah that it should be. And we should talk to all of us on two levels. We all give Maser. We all give 10% of our income. It's unthinkable to me that a part of that Maser, I don't tell you how much of it, that a part of that Maser go to this yeshiva. And then those of you with means, students and Sai Sims, those of you with means, think about taking of your wealth and, and establishing things at yeshiva. We all have to work at this. Also, I want to tell you that I've established a presidential project team on revenue generation. This task force is aggressively investigating alternative revenue sources, nothing illegal. These initiatives will be judged on quality, relevance to our core mission, and return on the investment. Most important, you've heard of some of them, the master's programs we're offering. These are quality educational programs that are also, in Yitzha Hashem, revenue producers. Most importantly, these initiatives will not only pay for themselves, but will contribute back to the university's bottom line. I want to encourage you to think of ideas in terms of revenue generation and share them with my office, please. Number four, 
The entranceway to almost all our buildings at Yeshiva University invitingly broadcast, welcome to Yeshiva University. How do you like that? Meander our campuses and immediately notice an inviting and refreshing culture of civility, a culture which condemns cynicism while inviting skepticism, a culture conducive to the nurturing of Balei Chesed and Balei Midos, of both kindness and of warmth. This incomparable and magnificent ambience, like so much else at Yeshiva, exists as an outgrowth of our mission. No Yeshiva and no university have the measure of support that we provide for our students on all of our campuses, whether through mashkichim or madrichim, through student life and student support teams, through the council of faculty and of Russia Yeshiva. No place provides the sort of holistic experience and support that we do. No place is a place of shlemus. And if this university, the whole university, is to be Torah informed, if it is to engage properly and productively in providing a tailor-made experience of Shlemut for each and every one of you, then supporting our students remains our primary importance. We have worked to establish this environment of Shlemut in Israel as well. In 2008, we dedicated lovingly the Rabbi Israel Miller Base Medrash at the center of our YU Israel campus which is used by hundreds in learning every day. Our July in Jerusalem program gives students an intense introductory program in Jewish studies while in Israel, while undergraduate students from both Yeshiva and Stern participated in a Summer Science Research Institute program as part of a joint initiative with Bar Ilan University. All of these initiatives speak to our inextricable and fundamental connection to Medinat Yisrael, to the flag that's on our flagpole, every day that says clearly that we are part of Knesset Yisrael and that we stand behind Medinat Yisrael. <laughs> By the way, I think it's a cheap applause line to say we're probably the only university in North America that flies the Israel flag. <laughs> Over the last nine years, we have built a community that E and E, that ennobles and enables, very good. And we'll continue to nurture that community through the promotion of communication and the fostering of collaboration. Transparency, ladies and gentlemen, is a tool of integrity. If we are to achieve the wholeness that we seek, we have to speak to each other and embrace the means of communications which the 21st century provides. I will not only make the State of the Union an annual event, so be forewarned, um, and I will, of course, continue my town hall meetings, but we will find additional means for continuing conversation individually and collectively in the future. I am proud of how this university at large, through the diligent efforts of the communications and public affairs team, has maintained and grown its global presence and reach through social media. I recognize the importance of staying relevant through modern technology, that's why I have children, and embracing its unparalleled potential in opening new channels of communications. Therefore, we will launch two new Twitter feeds from my office. <laughs> Vice President and Chief of Staff, Rabbi Josh Joseph, will tweet, sounds dirty, will tweet his responses, will tweet his responses to inquiries and post ongoing updates under the handle, and how do we call this, at Josh Joseph, zero, zero, he picked zero, zero, I didn't. Uh, and I will be sharing my personal thoughts and experiences, albeit less frequently, under at Prez Joel. Make sure to follow us both if you don't have a life. <laughs> Continuing in this theme of transparency, we have invested $17.5 million in a state-of-the-art banner management system which enables managers to call up-to-the-minute budgetary data and the university to maintain updated, accurate, and integrated data. In addition, maybe for the first time in our history, we will be publishing our annual budgets on our website for public and everybody else's consumptions. This collaborative culture has lent itself to the fostering of active and effective constituent groups within the university who've taken on the responsibility of improving our operation. Our faculty must be brought into discussions of YU's mission because they serve as important ambassadors in the actualization of that mission. We should all be pleased with the work being done by the new faculty council and welcome opportunities to partner with them in moving the university forward and advancing strategic plans 
for all facets of the university. Our students must not only learn within classrooms, but they must own their college experience and by extension, own this entire enterprise now and in the future. We rely on your input, your leadership. You're keeping our feet to the fire. And do it strongly, only with one proviso that I've already said. By all means, be skeptical. Go somewhere else if you want to be cynical. Okay, we have a wonderful, wonderful, you know, a cynic, uh, um, uh, who, who says that always? Oscar Wilde said that a cynic is someone who knows the price of everything and the value of nothing. And there's no place for cynicism in our community or in a Torah community. Skeptical, that's what we train you to be. We rely on you. Over the past few years, our governance procedures have been upgraded, our boards vitalized, and a true lay professional partnership exists. These extraordinary board members, and I only see one, I believe, tonight, my, 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 my friend and my mentor, Rabbi Erwin Shapiro, who is here, these board members, that's, by the way, that's because we had a board of trustees meeting last night. These board members have accepted the responsibility of ensuring that yeshiva is strong and is moving in valuable directions. And I can't tell you how important it is for me personally to have invested partners on all of our trustee and overseer boards. Finally, we prepare our students for wholeness and for success in their professional careers as well. The Career Center held over 100 events this year, which drew a total attendance of 2,667 students. I pay someone to count across both undergraduate campuses. Over the course of the year, a YU career link posted 2,160 positions, a 20% increase from the year before. This past year, 97% of law school applicants from yeshiva were accepted to a law school of their choice, well above the national average of 71%, including most of the nation's top law schools. Just take a look, take a look. Also of importance, nine students received full scholarships from our very own superb Benjamin N. Cardozo School of Law. And, <laughs> and 91% of medical school applicants from Yeshiva were accepted to schools of their choice. By the way, double the national average of 45%. The, uh, the 97% uh, law school, the national average is 71% of admissions. In total, <laughs> that's you, that's you guys. In total, according to the Career Center's postgraduate survey, 94.5% of the undergraduate class of 2011, who graduated a year ago, was employed attending graduate school or both by November after their graduation. <laughs> Finally, number five. Number five, ladies and gentlemen from the heart now. The dream is real. We are more than a yeshiva. We are more than a university. We are yeshiva university. We have a mandate to matter. As Rav Aaron Khan declared at our Kavod Torah celebration a few weeks ago, yeshiva boasts the finest Talmidei Chachamim, the finest Torah scholars in the world. And learning diligently from those Rabbeim are the thousands of students who make this yeshiva one of the most outstanding Torah academies in the world. And I have, it's true. But I'll also tell you that for Yeshiva University to be Yeshiva University, that must be the case. Without that, there's no reason for us to be. Our faculty boasts not only fine scholars, but human beings, who fine human beings, who seek to ensure that our students understand their place in the world and their possibilities in the world. Faculty are here because they want to be here. They're inspired by the students. They're proud to be part of a mission-driven university, and they're committed to learning in all its finest ways. As Rabbeinu Yitzchak Elchanan Specter of Kovno, the namesake of our yeshiva, commented on the words a few weeks ago, Tamim tiyeh im Hashem elokecha, you shall be tamim, you shall be whole with Hashem, your God, he comments that, actually what he says is, he compares it to another verse that says, Torah Hashem Tamima Meshivas Nafesh, and he says, Yisrael ve'orais achadhu, that, that Israel and Torah are one, and he says, just like if the Torah is missing a single letter, whether it comes from Torah Tziva Lanu Moshe, from Torah was, uh, was uh, commanded to God, uh, Torah Tziva Lanu Moshe, that Moses commanded us the Torah, 
or whether it's from Makoshe Sheitzim B'Shabbos, of somebody who goes out to cut a tree on Shabbos, wherever the missing letter is from, the Torah is incomplete and can't be used. Similarly, with regard to the people of Israel, to the people of Israel, right? If we are missing one person, if we've left out one person, then we as a people, we as a living Torah, are incomplete. We have no integrity. We have obligations to the Jewish people and beyond. We must keep expanding our reach as an institution and as individuals. You can't leave here thinking that you're not supposed to care about other Jews. We will continue to ensure that our students are always aware of their responsibilities to others, are always aware of their mandate to matter as a Jewish people and as God's partners with other people of goodwill in repairing and building the world. Through, th <laughs> through the creative and collaborative efforts of the Center for the Jewish Future, established just seven years ago, nearly 3,500 students have shared the joy of the Jewish holidays with communities across North America through the Schreiber Torah Tours program. A thousand students on wait, 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 you'll do the whole thing. A thousand students on service learning and experiential education missions across the globe in Eretz Yisrael and its sister country, El Salvador. Um, our YU Torah platform, our YU Torah platform welcomes 75,000 visitors a month. 75,000 visitors a month. And every holiday and every Yom Tov, we distribute 40,000 hard copies of our To Go series Torah publications. Our annual Champions Gate Conference, hosting over 450 participants from over 90 communities in North America and other places this past August, supports and strengthens communities and their leadership. Each year through the YU School Partnership, we reach over 250 day schools, thousands of educators, hundreds of school leaders, both lay and professional, nearly 800 educators. Most of them, our alumni, use our online job search engine to procure their employment. And this year, we helped over 70 schools in their search for quality administrators. We're taking the yeshiva system to its next step. The YU School Partnership benchmarking and financial engineering processes help ensure that yeshivas across the country can maintain their quality while remaining an affordable option for Jewish families. There's much more to describe and much more yet to be done. Each of you, and all of you play an important role in achieving yeshiva's shlemut, in achieving yeshiva's wholeness. We collectively matter. I invite you to join with me in building these points of purpose. Education 2.0, faculty and staff development, working on a practical business plan that can ensure our success, maintaining and building a thriving culture, and recalling and informing our lives with a mandate to matter. Let us write our shlemut agenda together. So we gather this evening just days before Rosh Hashanah. From time immemorial, the piercing resonance of the shofar's blast has stirred the hearts and filled the minds of the Jewish people, propelling us towards repentance and self-reflection. In this month of Elul, as we each consider our personal relationship with the Almighty, I believe we must also reflect more broadly on what the shofar reminds us as a community, and more specifically as an institution. The Rav Zatzal, whose 20th Yortzeit we commemorate at Yeshiva this year, famously maintained that the ultimate Kiyom Mitzvah, the ultimate fulfillment of the commandment to sound the shofar, occurred not merely through passive listening, but by way of a more sophisticated recognition and internalization of the shofar's message. As I hope I've demonstrated to you tonight, there are so many tremendously positive initiatives and opportunities happening at Yeshiva at this very moment. Far too many to limit to one address or presentation. But without the proper context, without a unifying theme, without, as the Rav might call it, a proper communal kavana, a communal direction, they cannot amount to a true and complete fullness of our divine directive. That is why we're gathered here. If we are to fulfill that divine directive, we must labor to discern within the timbres of the shofar's cry our covenantal awakening. The shofar must awaken us to that more sophisticated recognition of our unified purpose. And so my precious partners at Yeshiva, I humbly yet firmly say to you in the spirit of the high holy days, the yamim no ra'im, and in the spirit of the shofar, it's time to wake up. It's time to awaken to our unique calling. 
awaken to our awesome responsibility, awaken to our own identity as crucial constituents of this indispensable incubator of shlemut, of wholeness and integrity. Yeshiva University cannot fulfill its potential unless all of its disparate components become more enlivened, invigorated, inspired by a sense of responsibility and purpose, by an organizational ethos as the great facilitator of this consecrated conversation between Torah and the world. I'd like to invoke one catchphrase that we've used this year. This time, though, I use it in the most precise sense imaginable, as I hope I have corroborated by our conversation. The catchphrase is nowhere but here. If some of you, if some of you have rolled your eyes at this refrain in the past, I ask you to revisit it once more, not as an empty slogan nor as a simple advertisement, but as a bona fide shofar blast of the highest order, nowhere but here, with Torah as our essential values and the wide world as our consonants of construction, we speak the language of this consecrated conversation like no one else. Our fluency is unmatched, but will we serve as translators to a confused world, as ambassadors of wholeness and integrity to a fractious and fearful civilization? Is this partnership with God in the pursuit of shlemut a presumptuous notion? Most assuredly not, it's our obligation. Adjacent to the slogan swath tzedakah box, the pushka on my mantle, are two pieces of parchment given to me, framed side by side. One of them reads, the Anochi Afar Ve'efer. I am as the dust of the ground, and reminds me every day of the importance of humility as a constant and sobering companion. But humility in our tradition has never been the insistence of worthlessness, but rather the acceptance of responsibility. We are responsible for each other. For ourselves, we are responsible for tomorrow. On the other piece of parchment, Bishvili nivra ha'olam, for me, the world was created. God tells us in no uncertain terms, this is our world to engage, to make better, to make whole. Nowhere but here, no one but us, no time but now. Thank you and aksiva chasimatov.